they say, how are you? We say, live in large and take a charge, big boy. So this was another highly requested review and I have to say that I really enjoy doing this one. This movie is a top 10 for me and I vividly remember going to the movies with all my cousins to see it. So many one liners in this one and also Hallie and Natalie DeSalle killed it. I believe Hallie is one of the few black actresses who has had the ability and privilege to play every type of character throughout her career. Yet and still, I remember there being a fuss about her playing this type of character. I would have loved a sequel to this and I don't say that about a lot of classics. Unfortunately, Natalie is no longer with us, but that doesn't mean we can't still give her her flowers cause she deserved, okay? But as always, while watching this movie, I noticed a few things and you know we're gonna talk about it. So let's get into it. The movie starts out with us being introduced to Nisi and Mickey. They currently work together at a diner, dealing with picky customers like Nate. Why did you have to burn my toast, baby? Now you know you said you wanted everything well done. During their shift, Nisi sees a commercial about Heavy D being on the search for a dancer for his music video. And when she's caught doing more watching than working, Mr. Johnson, her boss, threatens to take $10 out of her check. $10. I don't want to hear nothing, Nisi. Not another word, another phrase, no so. Hey, shut up. Baby, Nisi was pissed about that $10. Then, if the day couldn't get any worse, Nisi and Mickey's boyfriends, James and Ali, stood them up. Got them out here walking in the Georgia sun after work. Child, it's a mess. So while they're walking, Nisi is trying to convince Mickey that they need to go to LA and audition for Heavy D. But then Mickey reminds Nisi that her ass can't even dance and they are not about to spend their life savings on a pipe dream. One thing about Nisi though, she was going to constantly remind Mickey that they were better than their current circumstances every chance she got. And as she starts to do so, guess who finally shows up? We deserve the best. That's why you got me. You got me. Oh no, come on, Mick. Bye! Nisi claims she's tired of hearing about Ali's pipe dreams, but girl, you trying to go across the country for one. But I digress. Ali doesn't hear her though. He's not budging. If you really cared about me, you would get rid of that tire perm I've been telling you about forever. Oh, I don't cut my hair. I ain't cutting the hair, nah. If anything, I'm gonna bring the perm back. So later we go to Nisi's and Mickey's place. Baby, they were manifesting all this inspiration on the walls, love that for them. But baby, this hairstyle on Mickey though? Okay, that's it, we pulling out the counters. So they are watching TV and they see another commercial about the Heavy D audition. And as Nisi continues to do Mickey's hair, she sees a print ad for the same audition. And in Nisi's mind, this has to be a sign. My mama always told me, good things come in three. I heard it on the radio, now I read it in the magazine, and now it's on TV. This is it, Mick. So Nisi makes a final attempt at convincing Mickey to go to LA, and this time, Mickey agrees. Hell yeah, cause it ain't nothing but some fine young rich men in LA. <laughs> so to celebrate their new plans, they decide to hit the club, and no worries about spending unnecessary funds, cause ladies get in free. So they get to the club, serving looks per usual, and as soon as they get in, they spot two wannabe players and try to get them to buy them drinks. But baby, these players thought they were being treated instead. Got this bartender wasting his time and liquor. Hell no, let's go. I ain't thirsty. Come on, let's go to the bathroom. He gets so mad that they weren't going for the BS that he grabs Nisi's arm being all disrespectful. The way I would have snatched my arm back, child, a mess. But the way Ali showed up out the blue. What you gonna do, Captain Save a Hope? Hmm? Hmm? <laughs> I swallowed my go to. So they go back to the bar. The bartender is judging them cause he's not about to go through this again. And of course, Ali and James ain't got it either. And this sets Nisi off. Hell no, nah. come on. Come on, it's ladies night. Nisi starts arguing with Ali about wanting better for herself and how he's 
again, investing in pipe dreams. He reminds her that he's working on his pager cab, luxury cab business, and she dogs that dream by reminding him that he don't even got a license. Well, ma'am, you trying to go to a, a dance audition, but your ass can't even dance in order to win some money. Same boat. But Ali decides that he no longer wants to fight and asks her to dance with him, but it's a no for her. So we fast forward to the girls on the plane, on their way to the audition, and baby the hair. Mickey asks Nisi if she thinks she's overdid it. I'm going to answer on her behalf. Yes. Yes, she did. Baby Mickey about to take out this guy's eye, and as the in-flight movie is about to play, it's confirmed that Nisi did in fact do way too much with the hair. Would you mind lowering your hair? Hey, you with the hair. No problem. It's beautiful. And as soon as they get to LAX, they spot LL Cool J and damn near run him over. They start praising him about rapping what he preaches and actually staying with his baby mama. But not even five seconds after telling him all this, Mickey says this. Oh, and I know you with your baby's mama, but if the shit don't work out, you know you can come in. So they finally make it to the audition and they go straight to the audition from the airport in these outfits and with all their luggage and with only enough money for one night at a motel. It's a mess. And when they spot some competition in the line while they're waiting for the audition, Nisi decides to let the LA girls know what's up. Uh, that was good, but uh, you might want to go on home now because I'm here. <laughs> That's my girl! That's my girl! That's my girl! Yeah! Boom! Yeah! Baby, those moves didn't land in the audition. And as you might have guessed, it didn't go well at all. But as they were leaving out, they run into this guy and he knew he found the right ones for what he needed. He straight up lies to them about being good dancers and how his boss is looking for extras to be in a music video. But before the girls say yes, they need to know what the money's looking like. Hold up, how many C notes we talking here? Room and board in East Beverly Hills Mansion and $10,000. $10,000? So they get in this car, they don't even know this man, haven't checked out one credential, but they trust his word and he takes them to the mansion. Fun fact, this mansion has been owned by Babyface and more recently Beyonce. But yeah, they go to the front door, Nisi tries to prep Mickey and give her a quick brush up on her manners, but she needs more work. But if they say, how are you? We say, live in large and take a charge, big boy. Baby, y'all from the South. Why you gotta learn manners all of a sudden? That's bread in us from the get-go. But anyway, the butler answers the door and it's an immediate no. How did you get past security at the gate? Begging is not permitted in Beverly Hills. He was such a dick at first. You didn't even ask any questions. You just assumed they weren't supposed to be there. But Isaac opens the door and introduces himself to the girls and he knows that they are perfect for the job. You know, just looking at you, I can tell you're exactly what I've been looking for. Isaac asks Manly to show them upstairs to their rooms. The girls are mesmerized by the mansion. Every time Manly tries to lead them upstairs, he clears his throat to get their attention. And eventually Mickey gets annoyed by this. You need some throat lozenges or something. Lead the way, Alfred. The name is Mr. Manly. Child, Manly did not sign up for this. Not at all. But he takes them upstairs and gives them an area to wait in, in the rudest way possible. Waiting well. What kind of welcome is that? Wait in there. The girls end up going into an oversized bathroom with a regular toilet and a bidet. Baby, Nisi starts talking about how the bidet is for number one and the toilet is for number two. And when Mickey asks how do you flush the bidet, Nisi old ignorant ass decides to show her. See, she should have just left it alone instead of trying to act like she knew because it goes bad. Real bad. And honestly, that's a lot of force for the bidet. I know the purpose, we ain't even gotta bring that up, but like, that was a strong stream. Might mess something up. 
But anyway, the girls change clothes and get gussied up so that they can talk with Isaac about their new jobs. So Isaac decides to tell the girls his true intentions. And one thing I noticed is that Isaac loves to say things without saying things. So whenever he does this, I will write what he's really trying to say on the screen. I'm not making a music video. I just, I just didn't know how else I was gonna find an actress like yourself. So he goes on to tell them how his uncle is dying from cancer and how he was never able to marry the one woman that he truly loved because he was white and the woman he loved was black. Isaac thinks that it will be a great idea that since he only has two weeks to live that he gives him a chance to be close to Lily again and since Lily is dead why not introduce him to Lily's girls this was such a dumb idea like seriously but he goes on you just do anything and everything that you can to make sure that his final days are, are filled with with kindness and love so they basically agree to this and go off to introduce themselves to the uncle. But Mr. Blakemore, that's his name, was not here for it. I'd like you to meet Denise. Denise is Lily's granddaughter. How dare you bring him in like this? How dare you? So the girls run out of the room and later they meet for a dinner where Mr. Blakemore has calmed down and is ready to formally introduce himself. Well, hello there. Have a seat. Mm -hmm. Let me say, throughout this movie, Mickey stayed doing this to Nisi. She always pushed her right in the mess or left her to clean it up. Hilarious. He starts telling the girls about Lily and asking them questions about her. Nisi is just grasping for straws and Mickey is just leaving her out to dry. I suppose she told you all about life on the estate. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she did. What exactly did she say? told me about the trees. Oh, wonderful trees. But baby, when the food gets there and it's looking bland, sour, and undone, Mickey decided to speak up about it. What's this? I'm only permitted to eat certain foods. You ain't dead yet. Child, Mr. Blakemore starts talking about how there ain't no food like soul food and Mickey decides to show him how true that is. This girl goes to the kitchen and starts whipping it up. I hope he wasn't too hungry because I know it took her at least four hours to hook that food up, but the plate was looking good. Way better than option number one. And baby, Mr. Blakemore couldn't wait to smash that plate. Face all up in it. And Manly was hating, per usual. So later the girls are in their room and Mickey wonders out loud if James and Ali misses them. And we don't have to wonder too hard if Nisi misses her boo. I don't know, but I know I miss my man. Mm -mm, you need to scoot over because I ain't got no problem sleeping on this expensive white carpet because I know it's poodle hair. Soon after, there's a knock and it's Antonio and child, Mickey ran straight to him. They go to another room where he starts trying to push up on her strong, but Mickey was not here for that. Hey, hey, you see, we came down here to talk. But Antonio goes on to tell his secret, how his family is rich and how he came to America to try to find real love and he thinks he's found it with Mickey in just a couple of days. But he tells her he's gotta go, but promises he'll be back soon. And baby, the next day, Mickey is telling Nisi about her new rich boo, but Nisi knows better and can see right through Antonio's BS. Well, if he's so rich, why did he have to come all the way to America to find his wife? I don't know, but I ain't got no rock on my finger, so I say we keep shopping for our baby's daddies and may the fattest wallet win. Love that for her. We then go to bitter ass Manly going off about the soul food. He is mad and in his feelings that Mickey has taken over the menu. But this so-called soul food has been known to clog the arteries, cramp the colon, and eventually stop the heart. Is that true? Mm-mm, not the way she do it. Good. Baby Manly is mad. <laughs> But Isaac insists that the girls keep doing what they're doing and he even suggests that if they need anything, Manly will be delighted to go get it. The girls ask if Manly could go to the record store and Isaac accepts their request on Manly's behalf. Then Mr. Blakemore slides through, back and better than ever, even adding on his request for Manly. And don't forget my Ice Cube CD, Manly. Good morning, everybody. How are you, Isaac? Good to see you. What's for breakfast? 
And so they sent Manly off to get some records from the record store. Uh, I miss record stores. You just had to be there. But child, this guy is making a simple task super difficult for Mr. Manly. Excuse me, please. I wonder if you could help me. He takes one look at him and tries to direct him to the classic section. But, oh no, Manly looking for something real and true. Looking for the rap section as follows. Uh, two pack, two short, the dog pound, ice cube, ice tea, bitch better have my money and pull up to the bumper, baby. Manly's getting real cultured right now. Against his will, of course. We go back to the girls who are chilling in the pool. Mickey is relaxing with her snacks and Nisi and Mr. Blakemore are playing a little basketball. And while Mickey is reaching for her snacks, she falls into the pool and she is devastated cause her hair is done for. After seeing Mickey get upset about her hair, Mr. Blakemore suggests they go to the salon on him, but then he decides to go even bigger and offers to take the girls on a shopping spree. And of course, it's montage time. It ain't a 90s film without a good old montage. We see the girls shopping on Rodeo, hitting up Armani, Gucci, and everybody else, serving us look after look after look, living it up, child. Even got Mr. Blakemore doing a mini fashion show for them. It's real cute. But they didn't know they were being watched and photographed by their dirty Isaac. We then go back to Isaac, who is planning to set up the girl so that he can secure his chances to get that inheritance from his uncle. So the next day, when the girls are coming into the house after their workout, Mickey brings up the fact that maybe Nisi can find a man like Antonio. And Nisi wonders how is that even possible since they will be leaving once Mr. Blakemore passes. As soon as she says it, their moods instantly change and they can't believe that they are basically sitting around waiting for this man to pass and they feel bad about it. Whole time, Manly overheard all of this and I think this causes him to warm up to the girls and realize they are not out to do Mr. Blakemore any harm. But the girls change the subject quickly and start discussing their stories and turns out Manly watches them too. You watch the stories? Oh yes, I videotape every episode. Get the fuck out of here. He goes on to tell them what happened and they thank him for telling them what's up. You it. I knew he did it. Dr. Matthew. Thank you, Alfred. Manly. Later on, Mr. Blakemore takes the girls out to dinner and baby, it's a hot mess. They don't even make it to their table before stumbling over celebrities and making them perform for them. First, they run into Howard Hewitt and baby, Mickey was not taking no for an answer. Uh, you got, got to sing something. Oh, now. yo, yeah, here. I ain't letting you go to you sing something Okay, okay, okay. okay. Then as soon as Nisi tries to chastise Mickey and remind her how she needs to be classy, her ass goes crazy when she sees Leon. Peep his eyes. Ah! Lena! Oh, I love you. Wait, Nick, exhale. I want to exhale. I want to exhale. Child, then they both spy Heavy D, and he ends up recognizing them from the audition. And why did Mickey try to convince him that she was the next Monifa? Girl, a miss. The Mickey remix. Check us out. Oh, no, this is not this. too long since you've been gone. Feels good when I went to. I miss you. Come back. This host eventually gets tired of their ass and directs them more sternly to their table. Later on in the night after they are finishing their meals, Mr. Blakemore asks Nisi if she cooks after she makes a complaint about the food. She tells him no and that doing hair is more her thing. He then tells her how Lily used to do hair as well and Nisi starts slacking on the act and Mickey has to remind her who she is. So did Lily. Oh, oh grandma. Yeah, Lily, Grandma can grease the scalp, couldn't she? Uh-huh. Child, then Mr. Blakemore asks her to tell him more about Lily, and then the food that Nisi just complained about suddenly became real appetizing to her. She uses it as a distraction, and eventually the waiter comes to the table to save her from further embarrassing herself. So, later on that night, after everyone's gone off to bed, Nisi is up talking to Ali. The conversation is going well at first, but then Ali says something stupid and an argument starts. So Manly overhears this and asks if everything's okay, but soon after Ali calls back and Manly asks if he should answer. He will soon regret this because it turns into a heated back and forth. One moment please, it's for you. Tell him I'm through with his sorry ass. Go on, tell him. 
And Manly tells him just that. And Ali, of course, has words for her too. He says, you're tripping cause you're in Hollywood and he hopes you don't get played. And baby Nisa tells him to tell Ali she hopes his mama don't get played. Just going in on your boy. And it's at this moment that Ali knew he had messed up cause he tells Manly to apologize on his behalf. I think Manly had a soft spot for Ali. Well, he said he's sorry, maybe he's tripping, but he misses you very much on the real. Real. See, he's starting to understand the lingo. <laughs> we then go to Mickey and her boo. They're being all flirty and sensual when Mickey notices he's wearing gloves in the house, out the blue. Antonio starts getting a little too frisky and Mickey swiftly puts a stop to that by letting him know that until she has a ring on her finger, there won't be no love to be made. Antonio lets her know that he already has a ring and that Mr. Blakemore just happened to be so kind enough to let him stash it in his house. Yeah, okay. So he tries to open the safe and of course he couldn't open it, which in turn made Mickey so frustrated that she tried to open it herself. And surprise, she wasn't able to open it either. So Antonio promises to get with Mr. Blakemore tomorrow to verify the code. So a little later, there's a loud bang in the house and Manly goes downstairs to investigate. And when he does, he gets knocked out and lets out a scream, loud enough for the girls to hear. So they come down to investigate further. Baby, they run into this so-called burglar and give him a taste of his own medicine. Tyson would do it like this. Oh No, Tyson would really hit him like this. Oh. Child, they take off the mask and it's a familiar face. Turns out it was Antonio, Mickey's boo. And then Isaac comes down, shocked and surprised, and tries to throw all three of them under the bus. Help me out. Help you out? The three of you are stealing from my uncle. Then Antonio, in front of everyone, mind you, tells Isaac that their plan can still work and that it will be their word against the others and how Mickey's fingerprints are still on the safe. And you know Isaac was not about to go down with this man. I beg your pardon. I don't know what you're talking about. What plan? I'm calling the police. And then they just leave him alone with Nisi, trusting the fact that he won't make a run for it and also trusting he won't try to do anything to her. But baby Nisi handles her own when he gets too loose with the insults. Look what you have done, you little skeezers. Skeezers. Poor Mickey, she thought she had found her prince charming, but he was just a scammer looking for a come up. So the next day, Mr. Blakemore's attorney shows up to tell Mr. Blakemore what Isaac had been up to and how he's filing papers on him to prove that he is incompetent due to him, in Isaac's words, befriending two ghetto black girls that tried to rob him, moving them in and letting them rob him blind. Meanwhile, in the kitchen, Mickey and Nisi are learning the full story about Isaac and can't believe he would do that to his uncle. Mickey insists on making Mr. Blakemore a drink to make him feel better. Remember when I told you my grandmama used to make my granddaddy a special drink that would get him going? But didn't you tell me that it not only got him up, but that it got him up? Up is up. So after she makes him the drink, they come in to talk to Mr. Blakemore. He decides to talk to the girls and ask them if Isaac promised a fee. They lie and say that there wasn't one and let Mr. Blakemore know that they are there because they want to be. Mr. Blakemore then decides to offer them $50,000 each and the girls are shocked. $50,000? Holy shit! <laughs> the girls confirm to Mr. Blakemore again that they are there because they want to be and not to get any money from him. They tear up the checks to further prove their point. So at this point, Mr. Blakemore now knows he can trust the girls just as much as he trusted Lily, which makes him so excited that he could dance. So he decides to take the girls out on a fun night out and he's getting his life, okay? The roof, the roof, the roof, he's on fire! Mr. Blakemore was having a ball and maybe he was starting to do a little too much because he gets winded and almost passes out on the dance floor. 
They decide to leave the club and on their way home, Mr. Blakemore starts talking about Lily again. The looks on the girls' faces and then Mickey slowly leaving Nisi out to drown again. So funny. Mr. Blakemore apologizes to Nisi since she wasn't able to find the man of her dreams that night. And then Nisi starts to tell him about Ali and how she loves him but he lacks goals and ambition. And Mr. Blakemore admits that Ali sounds a lot like him. He goes on to say how he had no dreams, no goals in life until he met Lily and she brought all of that out of him and now she's the reason that he is as successful as he is today. Nisi says that her and Ali's situation is different but Mr. Blakemore gives her something to think about. There is no fortune worth the loss of a true love. Some things are priceless. So later when they're back home, Nisi and Mickey get into a slight argument about Mr. Blakemore. They're starting to feel bad about lying to him and feel that they need to leave to prevent further damage. Now that old man down there is a nice old man and he ain't got nothing around him but people trying to use him like you and me. Mickey insists that they say bye, but Nisi reminds her that he may ask questions, questions that they wouldn't want to answer. Nisi then comes up with a plan to write him a letter to tell him the truth so that they don't leave him hanging. So she stays up to write it and when she's done, Mickey wakes up and they talk a little. Mickey brings up the fact that they are coming back home worse than when they originally left. They don't have a job, an apartment to go to, nothing. But Nisi offers this glimmer of hope. Maybe, but maybe not. Some things is priceless, you know me? Like having a place to stay and a way to support yourself, girl. Let me stop. So Nisi heads downstairs and she's walking through the mansion, taking in their final hours there, and then a surprise. Forever. Excuse me, miss. It was never my intention to involve myself in your private affairs or to come off like a player hater. And I think it's high time that you two talked with each other face to face. Ali then cut the perm, then got a driver's license. Yeah, he knew his time was about to be up. <laughs> but he goes on to confess his love for Nisi, and I ain't gonna lie, this scene is still so cute. But then we go to Mickey and James, child. This scene is still so funny, but he was being really genuine with her, I guess. You deserve a big old house. You, 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 you deserve your, your own backyard. I want to take you out to dinner and every time we go out, we got to watch other people eat. Hell, I want to eat too. And baby, Mickey is having a hard time taking this all in and demands that James not say things that he don't mean. But after knocking him into the pool, he lets her know that he in fact means it. So while she's getting him out of the pool, they hear sirens coming towards the house and rush to see what's going on. Turns out Mr. Blakemore is not doing too well and they are rushing him to the hospital. So the girls rush to change and go to the hospital to see Mr. Blakemore. And of course, Isaac's leeching ass is there, putting on his best in mourning face. Even thanks to girls for all they've done with a check, but Nisi didn't want any parts. Uh-uh. You was the one who was about the money, not us. How's Lily? Mr. Blakemore's attorney gets the girls and rushes them over to Mr. Blakemore's side. Nisi tries to tell him the truth, but he tells her not to speak. He kisses her hand and he's gone. Y'all, why was my sensitive ass tearing up when I watched this like I didn't know what was about to happen? Just a mess. As Nisi is saying to herself that she didn't get to tell him the truth, his attorney lets her know that he already knew Lily didn't have any grandkids. The question is, when did he find out or did he always know? But anyway, the next day the girls are getting ready to leave and as they're coming down the stairs looking way different leaving than they did when they first came, they see Manly and brace themselves for their goodbye. Thank you for everything, Manly. Alfred will do very nicely, thank you. And as they're about to head out, the attorney tells the girls to hang on for the reading of Mr. Blakemore's will. And as the attorney reads the will, she starts off with what Mr. Blakemore wrote for Nisi and Mickey. 
I'd like to thank my Babs, Nisi and Mickey for making the last days of my life as pleasant as my first. Babs? Black American princesses. They learned that Babs stands for Black American princesses. I don't even think this was a saying prior to this movie, but yeah, we get into it and it's interesting. So, the girls get $100 million. Yeah. Ali and James are so going to marry them after this. Alfred, I believe, got everything else. His nephew got nothing. And for once, I was finally able to read her lips. She said, to my nephew, I leave you shit. Mr. Blackmore was petty, y'all. So we fast forward to the girls getting exactly what they wanted. It's the grand opening of their business. The boys have their page of cab, luxury cab service, which we have to give them props because they basically would have been an earlier version of Lyft or Uber. So yeah. The girls have their restaurant slash beauty shop and Manly, of course, is still around to help the girls looking good in his little white suit. And this is pretty much the end of the movie. The girls continue their grand opening, they're dancing, having fun, and we love a feel good ending. And here are my final thoughts. Luck was definitely on Nisi's and Mickey's side. These girls went to LA for a dance audition and they ass couldn't even dance. Then after they bombed the audition, they get picked up by a guy promising them that they can be in another music video for $10,000 and also have a mansion to lay their head. Child, we wish. First off, how and why did Nisi up and decide to go all out for a dance audition to win some money knowing her ass couldn't dance? Talk about manifesting. Child, they had better chances down at the casino. And then Nisi stayed down in Ali about his dreams, calling them pipe dreams and telling him that he lacked ambition. But baby, what's the difference between his and yours? Y'all was in the same boat. Secondly, Mickey was a great and supportive friend to Nisi because even though she knew her ass couldn't do nothing but hair, she still repped for her at that dance audition. Child, how only one of y'all was auditioning, but both of y'all came out sweaty and tore down? Like how? And that nephew Isaac was a dick. He used the fact that they were black girls from the hood against them and was intentionally looking for someone with their characteristics to aid him in taking advantage of his uncle. And the girls were so blinded by the hopes of money, fame, and opportunity that they were unable to see right through him. And the same for Antonio. Also, loved the way they got in Antonio's ass though. Teamwork makes the dream work. And though Manly was difficult in the beginning, he eventually warmed up to the girls. He was Mr. Blakemore's protector and was always looking out for his safety and best interests. But as soon as he saw that the girls meant him no harm and that they brought him so much joy, he became the girls' protector as well. Helping Nisi to reconnect with Ali, comforting Mickey after she found out about Antonio, and also vouching for the girls when Isaac tried to throw them under the bus. I definitely see why Mr. Blakemore took care of him at the end. One thing that I wonder about is when did Mr. Blakemore find out the truth about the girls? Something tells me as much as he loved Lily, I feel he would have tried to track her down prior to meeting the girls and would have already known that she didn't have any kids, especially since he knew she was already gone. And then if he found out about the whole thing after learning about Isaac's plan, why didn't he just say so after the girls showed him that they were no longer there for the money? I don't know. But overall, I'm happy they were able to achieve their dreams in the end and brought the attorney and Manly along. And you know James and Ali definitely married the girls. Let's hope they got a prenup though. But yeah, that's it y'all. As always, thank you for watching this video. Please like, comment, and subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye.